It's not something I've always wondered, but at times I've wondered how England it was so imperial and how this island nation could spread over the whole earth and colonize so many different places. Yet, as I'm looking into South Africa, the fact that they have these old buildings with writing on them in English, and you have that in Hawaii, and you have that all over the West, practically in different places. I'm wondering if the previous civilization, the civilization of giants, and you'll see why I say that, more evidence, um, why wouldn't it have been perhaps that they spoke English and the idea that the English settled New Zealand, the English settled Australia, the English settled South Africa, the English went to the islands and Captain Cook went here and there and everywhere. And So do you think it's more likely that the true narrative is different? Well, we know it is. By now, I'm, I'm at the point now, this is like when I accepted the that the earth is not a globe. I'm just at that point now. I'm accepting the fact that history is not as they say at all. And the fact of the matter is the age of exploration happened long before the 1800s. The so-called age of exploration really didn't yield many finds. They've listed some, some finds of islands, small islands, even as recently as 1996, near the North Pole. But these are insignificant discoveries. Everything was discovered already, inhabited, and built up by civilizations. These fairy tales, these stories of natives who, even though they're human beings, just like you and me, they didn't have a concept of an abode, a structure. We're we're led to believe they didn't have a concept of shelter from storms and rain, invaders and such, that they just, quote, lived off the land and were transient migrants and nothing that they constructed would last beyond their lifetime. And I don't believe it. What I see from the evidence is large groups of, of cult-like uh peoples moving into areas that are deserted, abandoned, with no trace or sign of anybody left, usually, of the former inhabitants other than some writing on the wall <laughs> in the form of advertisements and things. It's like these ready-made cities that they move into. And it's curious. It's strange. It's like, on the one hand, it's like it's like the, the, the history is a lie and the people were brought in from a cult-like um, seclusion given the false narrative by controllers, I call them, uh, in order to populate an area where they're not to know what really happened, which would be a genocide or perhaps a gigantocide is what I'm <laughs> thinking of calling it because... The previous inhabitants were gigantic compared to us. And the controllers may themselves may be, the high up controllers may be gigantic. And I was thinking about it a little more and I thought, you know, it would make sense if you want to subjugate all the people around you. One of the ways you could do it is to, if you can't make yourself physically and mentally superior to them by enriching or enlarging your own self. But you could make them diminutive and comparatively less intelligent by either inbreeding or perhaps intentional genetic modifications so that 
they are less likely to succeed if they should discover your whereabouts, intentions, and um, attempt a coup or rise up against you or to exact justice or make demands you don't want to give. You would have all these protections in place, the last of which would be the fact that you are taller and smarter than they are, and if it came down to mano a mano, they would lose. And it it makes perfect sense to me. It's a little bit like the book by Aldous Huxley called Brave New World, which I recommend reading. It's been a long time since I read it, but I remember it quite well. It made a huge impression on me as a junior high student or whenever I read it. I can't remember. Long time ago. Um, but they had the people who were like the betas or, or the lesser, maybe even a lower cast of people whose intelligence was only enough for them to, to perform mundane, repetitive tasks that keep the wheels of industry turning. I think that may be exactly what's going on. I think vaccines may even have something to do with it. Um, perhaps the chemtrailing. There is genetic experimentation that is referring to mass experimentation on populations via aerosol sprays and vaccines, among others. So I think, I don't, you know, it's, it's, I don't think that um, people are as stupid as they've become. You know what I mean? That the potential has been quashed before it could be engendered or enriched. Therefore, the theory that it would be intentional on the part of controllers seems plausible, especially in light of the photos I'm showing. And when you look at these, it does give every indication that it's like a bunch of lab rats being put into a ready-made scenario. Um, and that's the other... Um, so that's the other conjecture that I've been toying around with in my mind that it could be part of like an experiment where it's not just, uh, and it doesn't mean it's sinister in a way, but it's, it's like, um, it's not that the people in control or whoever's in control wants to, um, just hold and maintain control. They are probably past that point. They're not worried about it. They may just be running different scenarios because if there, if there are other realms to be populated, they may be experimenting with varied inputs to see what kind of human societies result from, um, from starting off with restrictions of certain kinds and freedoms of other kinds, technology at a certain level. And uh, that information gets used on the next reset or in the, the next new realm or the next undiscovered land to be revealed. There could be a whole continent in the Pacific that we don't know about. There could be a whole continent right around the North Pole that we don't know about. Um, there could be whole regions or realms underground or even in the in the air in the atmosphere uh kind of like the cloud city idea um there are a lot of possibilities if you open your mind to it there could be societies in the ocean vast area um the way that gravity works we think we know but it could be if it's a toroidal field it could be that you rise to a certain altitude. If you achieve this altitude, you enter another toroidal field and fall up or across or whatever the case may be into that realm. You know, call it Asgard or whatever you want. You know, there's all kinds of myths and legends alluding to that. So it's getting, I'm getting kind of esoteric, waxing fancifully, but these pictures do raise a lot of questions and cast doubts in my mind, serious doubts upon the official narrative, which um, whether or not I go over it in detail, I think you know that a bunch of pioneering 
um, colon colonists from an island nation can go and build up structures that rival the most glorious ancient cities of uh, early and modern civilization at the time in a matter of a few years. For what purpose? Uh, nobody really knows. It's cited as perhaps overcrowding or war. They use that a lot. But um, it seems dubious in my mind. How about you? So I want to thank a subscriber from Africa who sent me a link to these uh, South African uh, photos that are shown courtesy of the individual I, I presented uh, on the screen whose name and credit goes to these um, so that I could use them. And if you happen to use this or reproduce it, be sure to credit him in that as well. So we'll, we'll get back into it and I will hopefully do a live stream probably on Twitch uh, very soon, maybe even today. So you can just sign up and watch for that. Check out the link in the comments or in the description to Twitch. I don't know if I'll put it in the description. I'm not sure if I can. But there will be a link in the live chat, hopefully. There was in the last video I, I produced. Um, so then uh, I also am planning on doing a live chat with Flat Earth Brothers. Um, they were interested. I have just haven't heard back from them in the uh, past few days. I just am waiting to finalize when we do that, and then we'll just do it offline and publish it, I bet. Uh, other than that, um, Subphotonic hasn't posted in a month. I wanted to see what's going on there. I see he's been active on Skype. I just wanted to know if everything's all right or if he's been busy or computer problems or what's going on. So if he happens to be listening, that'd be cool if he'd check in. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to chat with him again soon. If you haven't seen my chat, that's on my secondary channel. And uh, the next chat I'll do with him, I'll post on the main channel for sure. So, all right. Thanks for listening. Catch you next time.